Hey everybody, this is Sim1717, and welcome back to the basics of RPG Maker VX Ace. Um, there might be some weird static. I'm gonna try and fix that. I don't, I don't know how I can fix that. Um, I don't think my video recorder likes my new microphone, which is, by the way, a Blue Yeti. So I probably sound a little bit different. My voice is probably a lot clearer. I don't know. Tell me in the comments. I don't know. Anyway, so, um, in this episode, I'm gonna just be going over some, a few, just a couple last things. Um, I've pretty much done all that there is to do. And, um, yeah, and then, yeah. So, first off, I wanna show how to do, like, a multi key door type of thing, which I already made, but I'll explain it to you, like, I'll explain it to you step by step. So basically, first, um, you're going to want to get all the keys for this door. I have all four. You'll get these keys through, like, a dungeon boss or something like that. That's how I'm going to be doing it for this game. And then, you just want to do a large set of conditional branches for every key that you need. Um, so if you have the slimy key in your inventory, it'll check if you have the spectral key, then it'll check if you have the ember key, and then if you have it, it'll check if you have the winged key. If you have all four keys, then success. There is another way of doing this, however, and that would be to... Um, make like a switch for each key like key one key that's not how you spell key key two and then like key three and yeah you get it you could do it that way um but it's not the way i'd recommend i'd recommend doing it this way because it checks if you have the items just in case you mess something up. And then, just to make sure that you don't somehow get rid of the items during the game, you need to make it a key item, make it, uh, don't make it be able to be consumed, and put the price at zero. Um, putting the price at zero makes it so that you cannot sell in shops, so you just do that for all four. And there you go. That's how you do that. And then the next thing I wanted to talk about was, is a pretty big thing for making games, and honestly, in my opinion, it's one of the biggest things, and that's theming. Theming your areas. For, for example, if we go back to Dungeon 1, it's mine-themed. Um, of course, you should probably make dungeons bigger than this, um, with maybe more diversity in enemies, more diversity in rooms maybe puzzles or something. And then for Dungeon 2, I'm making sort of a ghost house, as seen in the map properties, as House of Souls. Um, meaning the inside will be darker, it'll be themed darker, it'll feel darker, it'll look darker. Basically, you just need to theme it. And then Dungeon 5, which is where this door is, will be, like, I don't really know what you would call this theme, but it would be this kind of theme, where I have this kind of floor, this kind of wall, and, yeah. So you'd want to have the same walls, the same floors throughout the entire area, but not exactly the entire area. You might want to change up, like, say, in here, I might want to make a bedroom have a different kind of floor with carpet maybe and a different kind of wall who really knows so yeah for example i'll just kind of come into dungeon 2 and start making it a little bit just go ahead and make this 50 by 50 which is my default go-to size for things that i haven't quite figured out yet and um for like 
ghost house type thing, I don't think that the dungeon tile set would really fit it. So we're going to go back into interior. So we're going to need to make it, I would imagine it having not stone floors. So we give it like a wood floor, something like a pen tool. Give it some sort of wood flooring. Uh, you might use like stone on like the outsides of it. It it really is up to you what you do for your areas. Um, just make sure that you keep them within a certain set theme. For example, I will probably continue this theme everywhere. This is also important not only in dungeons, but also in like towns. For for example. If you look at this, I have houses being made of wood. I have a very worn path over here. Um, if we go to the world map, you'll see um, I'll have like this castle town over here. Everything here will be like nice and regal. Houses will be made of bricks. It'll look very, very nice in comparison to this town. And then the final thing I wanted to, well, one of the final things I wanted to talk about this episode is planning. Um, as you can see, I pretty much have all five of dungeons right here on this map. You just can't really see them. For example, right over here is the first dungeon. Here's the second dungeon. This will be the fourth dungeon over here, this volcano. This will be the third dungeon. Wait, no. Third dungeon, fourth dungeon. And then over here is going to be the fifth dungeon, which will fit nicely with the theme of it taking place in a mountain. So you want to plan it out so that you know where everything's going to be, how you're going to do everything, and all that good stuff. It it can be a pain, but you want to know at least the basics of what you want to happen within your story, within your world, before you get into the nitty gritty of making your game. So, I don't really think that there's much else I have to teach you. Um, one thing I will show you is how to make a custom door type thing. For this door, I have it with a delay. If you were to come into quick event creation door, just do any random door, you'll see that it's only three frames. I'm timing that by 10 so that each one is half a second, seeing as one second is 60 frames. You could have this be virtually any amount of frames. You could have it be like 120 for two seconds in between each movement Basically, if you come look into the store, you'll see that this is face down, this is face left, this is face right, and then this is face up. As you can see in, say, here. Down, left, right, up. So you, you're going to want to keep that in mind for, well, making doors. Um, I made it so that it had a half second delay in between each one for the dramatic effect, seeing as this will be the last dungeon in the game. That's my reason. Oh, I did not want to do that. I'm real silly. I need to make it this again. There we go. Yeah. It was. I did that primarily for the dramatic effect. You can do it again however you want. It's your game. And honestly, on that. I think the last tip I can really give for making games is have fun with it. Um, make a story up, make up characters, and just go with it. Have fun with it. It doesn't really matter how you execute it. Um, it doesn't really matter how you do it. Just make sure you have fun. Um, I guess another tip would be to get a good set of scripts. For example, I'm using quite a lot of Yanfly's stuff, such as his core, his battle, his visual battles, battlers, 
which by the way is one of my favorite scripts of all time because it makes it so that you can see your characters in the battle menu like when you're fighting you'll see for example um let's just go into the database really quick go to enemies actually no troops so your character could appear here 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 or here i think i think that's all the areas that they can appear the only problem with it is is that enemies are not automatically moved around to adapt to the script so you have to move them in compliance with the script that's the one downside in my opinion to it but it's still a really cool script it's one of my favorites and yeah so again get a good variety of scripts get a good variety of characters and have fun with it um i do recommend making a story up first make a, a basic outline for a story before you really get into making the game for example when i came into this i didn't make a basic story i just kind of wanted to go with the flow you could do that I, I don't really suggest it but it ended up becoming that the story was that there was some sort of disturbance um dungeon 5 is called the fourth door you need four keys to open the door um yeah but you also have to make sure to develop the story and all that. You have to make sure not to neg neglect it. Neglect it. That's going to bug me for a while. Neglect it. And yeah, for example, um, if we come to the bedroom, I have his journal. The character um, is has some sort of ability where like his family is kind of cursed with a vision with like visions that they have of the future and they can't stop it they yeah basically all that stuff they can't stop and there's a note from the elder council that basically says that his visions have become more frequent um with the actors you can have nicknames be like his could be like the seer for example i don't know you can go absolutely crazy with it if you wanted. But, um, yeah, I think that's going to be it for pretty much this entire series. Um, the basics of RPG Maker. I, I feel like I've gone through pretty well over all the basics of the game. Well, not game. Game engine. And, and um, yeah, I think you guys should be ready to take what you have learned from this and make games i will probably continue the series not through basics of rpg maker but rather through like let's make a game or something if you guys want to see that um just tell me in the comments down below and i'll do it if you want i would very much like to actually heck i might even do it without you guys get owned but yeah so that's going to be it for this episode. Um, pretty much, actually, this entire series. If I missed anything, tell me in the comments down below. If you need help with anything, tell me in the comments down below. Leave feedback, subscribe, like the video. All of it helps me out so much. So very, very much. And I appreciate it. So, um, yeah. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. See ya.